In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what to do to correctly install DLSS 4.5 recently announced by NVIDIA. This new version of Deep Learning Super Sampling is available for all RTX GPUs. NVIDIA announced this update at CES and it's available now. And principally, what does it do? It improves image quality when using DLSS mode. There's also a second element to this that'll work hand in hand with the improved image quality. And that's an update and expansion to the frame generation, moving from a max of times four to times six, but also significantly the option for it to dynamically change the number of frames being inserted. Frame generation, which was a smeary mess when it started, has come a long way, making games or simulations playable on lower to mid-range PCs. This expansion to the multi-frame generation we're not gonna deal with in this video, as it's not yet available, and is expected to be released around spring 2026. Whilst the frame generation in its current format only holds promise for those flying using the monitor or in 2D, DLSS 4.5 offers benefits to both VR and 2D pilots with the new preset M. Just a point of clarity here that DLSS 4.5 is an image enhancer reducing ghosting and artifacts, smoother edges, thus bringing greater clarity and is not in itself a performance enhancer. Deep learning supersampling is anti-aliasing technique and the gap between DLSS and TAA mode continues to narrow. To a point where, again, depending on your system overall, the difference is next indistinguishable. There is of course an indirect performance benefit for those that are able to turn down their DLSS settings increase the level of upscaling whilst maintaining graphics fidelity as a result of these enhancements. Welcome to your Flight Sim channel. My name's Mark. Thanks very much for watching and let's get started. Just a quick note of caution with your current settings without doing any form of update. If you have your DLSS override set to latest, when starting your sim you'll be able to see the new preset M, but that doesn't enable DLSS 4.5. In effect, the new preset does, well, nothing until you update accordingly, and that's exactly what we'll cover now. If you go and open your NVIDIA app and select the Drivers tab, you'll see there's a new driver available, 591.74. That's the driver that supports DLSS 4.5. If you scroll down to the bottom of that page, you'll be able to see what your current driver is. But before you install the driver, there's one thing you need to do. From the settings tab on the left hand side, under the about section, you need to tick the box opt-in to access beta or experimental features. This updates the NVIDIA app itself to support DLSS 4.5. Give it a moment, the app will tell you there's a new version available, then go ahead and install. The app will reopen once the installation is complete. According to NVIDIA, if you don't do this, you won't get all the options available to you in the NVIDIA settings. Okay, so our app is updated. We can now install our driver. Back to the Drivers tab. We can now go ahead and select Install. And once you do, it's not necessary, but I recommend you follow the following process. Select from the options available, Custom Installation, and select Clean Install. This will reduce the possibility of errors. Go ahead and install. Optional once again, but I recommend at this point you restart your PC. Better safe than sorry. Now that our app and our driver is now installed and updated, from the menu on the left hand side, select Graphics and select your flight simulator, in my case, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. If it doesn't show up, click the three dots and select Refresh. If that doesn't work, reinstall the app. With the flight sim selected, we're going to page down to Driver Settings. And we're looking for DLSS override model presets. And we'll open that. Model presets determine how DLSS functions. If we were to choose custom, then the options under super resolution would be able to see all the various presets that are available. And there is preset M. However, I recommend that you select latest for both frame generation and super resolution. Select apply. Underneath that is frame generation mode. Set by default to use 3D app settings. I recommend you leave it as that. And the same for super resolution mode. If you jump into SIM and you don't see preset model M, come back to these two settings and select global. Use 3D app setting. This may only apply to any of you using DLSS Swapper. And we'll touch on that in a moment. 
If you set DLSS Swapper after you're doing the settings here, they'll be overwritten. The only other change I make here, and it's a personal preference, is under Power Management Mode. I change that from Normal to Prefer Maximum Performance to prevent my GPU from throttling down. OK, we're done here. Let's have a quick look at DLSS Swapper. As you can see here, these are my settings. If you're not familiar with DLSS Swapper, there's tons of videos out there showing you where and how to use it. I won't be covering it in this video. Safe to say that any changes you make here, until such time as DLSS Swapper gets an update, which should be soon, I'm sure, should be done before you do your settings within the NVIDIA app. As these can overwrite the NVIDIA settings, you'll end up using Model K again and not getting the benefit of DLSS 4.5. In fact, right now, you're better off bypassing DLSS Swapper altogether and letting the NVIDIA app handle things for now. With all that done, we can now jump into Sim. At an airport I often use for testing graphics fidelity, a glider field that's in the Netherlands. I have the developer mode enabled and the frame counter up just as a point of reference. Remember DLSS 4.5 is about image quality and not about performance. Not really interested in the FPS but more in the latency. I choose this field because we're near water and we have a lot of animated objects in and around the runway. I'm in DLSS 4.5 and I know that for certainty because I've got the DLSS show indicator activated. You can see it there in the bottom left hand corner. You can see I'm using preset M. Also important to note I'm using DLSS version 310.5.0. Remember the DLSS swapper was 310.4. To see this, you have to be in DLSS mode in Sim. And again, as you can see, I'm in quality mode. So it's upscaling from 2K or 1440p to 4K. When I did a similar video on DLSS 4 when it was introduced, I showed you how to enable the show indicator. And for the sake of completeness, I'm just going to cut that portion out of that video and add it in here. If you're already familiar with it, you can just skip this part. With your sim closed, in the Windows search bar, type in RegEdit. We're looking for the Registry Editor. Select that to open it. For clarity, this step is only required if you want to do a check on what preset your DLSS is and what version you're using. It is not a requirement to get DLSS 4 operational. As mentioned before, if you're uncomfortable with RegEdit, simply skip this step and continue. Now we have to navigate to the appropriate entry. First of all, select H key local machine as shown. Click on that to open it. A list of directories will be shown. Then select software and open that. In the directory that's opened, we are looking for the entry NVIDIA Corporation. Fortunately, the directories are listed alphabetically. Where is that now? There it is. Let's open that. Then select global. And open that directory and we're looking for NGX Core. Double click that to open it. On the right hand side, right click the mouse button and select New. A number of options will be presented and you're going to select DWORD 32 bit value. This is the tricky bit and here we're going to type in Show DLSS Indicator, but it must be spelt exactly as shown capital S, capital D and capital I. Everything else must be lowercase, as indicated above. Once that's done, click on it, and then you're going to select Modify. Not Modify Binary Data, Modify. An input box will open up, select Decimal, and then type in 1024. Then select OK, and we're done. Registry Edit auto saves any entry, so now you can simply close. Once you're satisfied that you've got DLSS 4.5 functional, you probably won't want the show indicator to be showing in SIM all the time. Simply return back here and change the value from 1024 to 0, and that effectively turns it off. We're now back to the SIM. Going to jump to my settings. We're under the graphics tab, of course. As you can see, I'm in 4K using DLSS in quality mode. Frame gen is off. And VSync is disabled. My graphic settings are a combination of ultra, high, and medium. 
I'm starting with these settings not because they're optimal, because they're not, but simply because I'm checking graphics fidelity. I mean, one of the default aircraft, the wonderful Gottfriends Draco X. Okay, we're now up in the air. Graphics are looking very good, but they were in DLSS 4 anyway. My frame time's running just over 12 milliseconds, which again is not bad at all. I've chosen this aircraft specifically because it's got both altitude and speed tapes, and DLSS is well known for smearing the cockpit numbers in a setup like this. So please ignore the way I'm flying. I'm really just trying to get some reasonable amount of movement. And as you can see, there's, well, there's next to no smearing at all. That's all looking very good. But to some degree with frame generation off and on being on quality mode, I would expect that. So let's up the ante a little bit now. Head back to my graphics settings. What I'm going to do now is enable frame generation. Frame generation is the insertion of artificial frames. I think I'm going to go for the current max setting, which is 4. Not that I really need it with my current performance, but it's a worthwhile test anyway. Let's head back and jump back into the cockpit and do the same tests again. Let's get that altitude and speed tape moving fairly rapidly. I must say that the gauges and dials look fairly clear. Might not be quite as crisp as it was, but perfectly satisfactory, I think, for normal flying conditions. Quite a substantial improvement, bearing in mind it's frame generation times 4. My latency has remained more or less just above 12. But that's not really an acid test, simply because I'm doing these tests on a 120Hz monitor. So in reality, I'm only realizing 120 FPS. But nonetheless, the results are impressive. Gauges, all clear. So once again, time to up the ante. So once again, back to our settings menu. I'm going to leave it on 4K and frame generation times 4. Under the super resolution, I'm going to turn that all the way down to ultra performance. So now I'm upscaling from 720p all the way up to 4K with frame generation with 4 artificial frames. So time to put that to the test. Once again, my focus in DLSS now is on the cockpit clarity, particularly for the instruments and the ticket tapes. And I've got to say, right from the outset, I'm impressed. There is a tiny bit of smearing, there's no doubt, but nothing like it was. The gauges, in my opinion, in this particular aircraft were absolutely fine. Another good test here is I'm looking through the prop and I'm looking at the wind turbines. And I'm looking for visual artifacts. And to be honest, well, I'm just not seeing much at all. There might arguably be a little bit of tearing on the actual blades itself, but that's a V-Sync problem and not DLSS. My system is probably not the best one to test it under these conditions because I do have a 5090, but the same principles apply. This is very encouraging indeed, but we don't need to just do the test on the internal cockpit. Let's have a look at the outside. Still using frame generation and ultra performance under DLSS. Now I've noticed previously that when you fly over water at a fair speed, you often get a lot of smearing at the trailing edges of the wing and tail. And once again, considering my settings, I'm very impressed indeed. Now obviously these are just very quick tests. They're not exhaustive or conclusive in any way. But I honestly have no hesitation in just saying that I think that DLSS 4.5 has tremendous potential to really boost the sim and provide great visuals across a wider range of hardware. This is one to keep your eye on. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Stay well, look after yourself, see you again soon, and ciao for now.